Hey there, traders. Welcome to another daily E-mini futures trading recap, where we use levels of support and resistance in the SPY to enter trades in the S&P 500 E-mini futures. It is about 8.16 a.m. Eastern right now on Tuesday, July 16, 2024. And the levels you see on your screen have been identified well before the opening bell, and they will be used as our baseline for E-mini trades today. If and when the SPY hits any of these levels and everything else looks good at the time, trades will be entered in the E-minis following a set of rules with the intent of pulling ES points out of the market. There are two zones on the board this morning, kind of bookends at the top and bottom of this chart. If the SPY gets to either of these areas today and the market is acting more or less normal, then the entire area between the dashed lines is likely to provide a reaction in the opposite direction. I also want to bring attention to these two levels in the middle here. There is a $1 spread between these two levels, which is around 10 ES points. Both levels are important, so I'm not making this a zone, but also I probably won't adjust the levels with the usual $0.05 cent buffer if price hits either of these levels today, just to get a slightly better price. It's somewhat dependent on how the market acts today. We'll come back to this same chart after the closing bell today to analyze the trades that were taken. Catch you then. And we're back at it. It's 6.45 p.m. almost, and it should be pretty obvious at this point which two levels the market thought were important today. There was just one trade. I shouldn't say just one trade. Any trade is good. This is a profitable trade up here. They missed this one. I told you I didn't really think I wanted to adjust these levels here at 5.6202 with the one below. Kind of treating it kind of like a zone, but either way, if I had pulled this one up five cents, it would have been still a few pennies away from triggering. You can see the low of this 10.10 a.m. candle was 5.6210, so that would have been three pennies away. We'll just go ahead and watch the recording of this near miss trade, a no trade, and then this real trade here. Uh, I did record today. It's pretty obvious that that one worked but it should become pretty clear by looking at the trades as they happened. So this is sped up, but you see me putting the order in at 562.02 to buy a couple contracts. And these are my profit target objectives and the fumble threshold on the board. And when it comes down pretty close, I slow it down. This video, the it slows down from 16X to like 5X or so, just to show you it came up close. And then I'm looking at this. And if they come back up to where you would have had a profit, a base hit, I gave them a little bit more time. They did it one more time. And that was the point I said, okay, that must be the trade. I'm not sure I want to chance this level again. So I just marked that level with a little dotted line. That's my indication that it's done and went down lower and started looking at this level and had an enter or I had levels limit orders on the chart to kind of buy in this area a little ahead of it and then down at the level. So this is kind of in the middle of the zone, if you can picture that. But they never made it down there. Let's just go ahead and scrub ahead because they end up going all the way up. So change the game plan and wanted to put an order in to sell short at 564.34. So I'll let it get up to the level. And there we go. So I don't know if you noticed. I'm going to just back up so you can see it. it. It's triggered automatically. So there's an order in the system. The moment it touches 564.34, you see it right here. Just two, two contracts short. And it didn't take very long for this one to play out. And really, I just kind of wanted this to wrap up. And I didn't look at the market that much after this because, I mean, I kept an eye on it, but I wasn't actively paying attention to it. I didn't want to babysit this trade, in other words. I wanted to just get this done. 11.30, I, I wanted to do something else. And um, so it worked out pretty well. They handed over base hit and then some. So had you trailed up a, a part of a position, a contract or two down, you could have got more. I'm not sure if anyone tried to do this, but... This was, uh, you know, an important level identified well before the market opened. And I'll just move ahead here. So there's the, the four points, four hundred dollars of two contracts, and they continue lower. But that was that was it for me. Just the one trade, playing by the rules, and the one trade that I got and didn't take any other creative liberties. So these were the two trades. Some front runners got this trade before it triggered. Don't know if any of you who had the level this morning tried it. And jumped in a little early, but that level obviously was important. And then here's the other trade as designed from levels put on the chart long before the market opened. Log number one, playing by the rules, one base hit. And that's what I got. You saw it. So not much different, but you can explore the percentages and averages and everything to date.
that's it. Thanks for tuning in to another daily recap of these E-mini futures trades. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Support the channel. I would appreciate it. And we'll be back tomorrow with fresh levels and a new game plan. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.